Nice music, I like it. I was hoping for fresh prints, but I'll take it. That works. All right. Um, fresh prints, Pogs, Nintendo, Capture the Flag, and Pizza Pockets. Those are just some of the best memories from my childhood. But one of the best memories, one of the best weeks, one of the best moments had to be the Scholastic Book Fair. Anybody remember the Book Fair, right? Exactly, the Book Fair. That was my jam. I love the book fair. It was like Disneyland for nerds. I loved it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Scholastic Book Fair, uh, essentially it was this idea that this company would come into your elementary school, they'd take over your library, and they would sell all the coolest stuff. You could get the coolest posters, you could get these cool erasers, you could get the most amazing things that you couldn't get at Staples and Chapters or whatever you have in the US. I think you guys have those places. Um, but like you couldn't get this stuff anywhere. But I loved the book fair. I would try to do so many chores to get extra cash so I could buy all the cool erasers. Uh, the R.L. Stein Goosebump books, you could find like limited edition covers. I loved it. There was nothing better in the world. That feeling that I would get when I found out the book fair was coming to town was unparalleled. There was no better feeling than knowing that the book fair was coming to town. But it wasn't all love, right? Like, I don't know if you guys remember these books, The Magic Eye. I still can't figure out how to get my eyes to do the thing to see what everybody else sees when they look at these. I still, to this day, can't do it. And after, if you would like to give me a tip, I will be right in the back just waiting for someone to show me how to get my eyes to work for these. I hated these books, hated them, but I did love Waldo. Waldo was my jam. I loved this dude. Like, this was my guy. I remember, like, spending nights just studying Waldo books, trying to figure out where he was, and I would get so excited, so satisfied when I would discover, there's Waldo. Found him. Mom, found him. Got Waldo. It was nothing better, right? There was nothing better than finding Waldo. Um, Kids today, though, got it way easier than we did, right? Like, there's actual technology today. If you checked out Brittany's talk on machine learning, check this out. So there's this new visual um, machine learning tool that actually scans the pages of Where's Waldo. It looks for the faces. It identifies if it's a human or if it's a dog, and it scans the face of the humans, and it actually starts to process whether or not it's Waldo. The contraption has a camera in this little plastic hand, and when it identifies with 95% confidence that that's Waldo, the hand drops on Waldo. It's crazy. It's wild, right? Back in the day, there was some real gratification that came with finding Waldo. Um, and if you just went analog and you were to find Waldo in a book today, it would still be pretty hard. It would be difficult. It would be challenging. The same challenge that you have or that I had when I was trying to find Waldo is oftentimes the same challenge that organizations, that content marketers, that content creators, that SEOs have when it comes to uncovering content ideas worth chasing. That same challenge of trying to figure out, is this an idea I should chase? Is this a topic that I should cover? Is this a story? Is this a message? Is this a lane that we should go down? Um, we find it very difficult to uncover these ideas that are worth chasing. We find it very challenging to find a content asset that is worth developing. And it can be a real struggle to do so. But when you find it, there's no better feeling, right? It gives you that feeling of being back in the book fair all over again. There is no better feeling than finding an asset idea that was linkable, that is shareable, that is findable, that is bookmarkable. There is no better feeling in the world than having a dashboard that is just consistently showing that the content that you've developed is generating backlinks. There's no better feeling than getting notifications on your phone at 2 a.m. that the content that you created is driving sales. There's no better feeling than getting notifications through email saying that people are subscribing to your YouTube channel, that people are downloading your lead magnets, that people are signing up for your webinar. There is no better feeling. But it's hard, right? We've got all the technology. We've got all the tools. And I believe that we are, as an industry, starting to fall into a very simple trap. We're falling into this trap of tool fixedness where we are relying on the same tools to solve the same problems as our competitors, as everybody else in the industry, and as a result, we're just creating a lot of the same content. My hope today is to share with you a framework 
and an idea and a concept that will help you not only uncover content ideas that are worth creating, but also give you a framework to ensure that you are not stuck in a, a, a bubble where you're constantly relying on keyword tools to uncover what content you should be developing. I really think that there are tons of other opportunities and we're gonna get into the weeds of some of this stuff, like really gritty into how you can actually uncover content ideas, but I really think that it's important that we fall out of that trap of only focusing on keyword tools when it comes to uncovering content ideas. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. A lot of people think that coming up with ideas is a little bit like this, right? Where it's like the Mad Men days. It's not, it's more like this. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Um, at Foundation, my agency, we have this three-step process, a very simple process that we use when we're thinking about content ideas, and it's this. Research, rethink, remix. It's a very simple process. It's a very linear process. It starts with research. And when I say research, I'm not just talking about keyword research, which a lot of us rely heavily on when we're coming up with our content ideas. I need to tell you, like, for, like right away, keyword research is a great opportunity and a great way to uncover content ideas. Later today, Nadia is going to be doing a talk all about content, and she's going to be dropping some knowledge bombs on keyword research. I think keyword research is a great approach but it's not the only approach. And I think a lot of us make the mistake of falling victim to this idea that keyword research is the only way. When it comes to research, what you're trying to do is find user channel fit. What do I mean by that? It's uncovering exactly where your users, the people you're trying to connect with or spending time, and validate the fact that whether or not they are there. Once you've done that, it's time to rethink the content that lives on that channel and have a better understanding of what stories resonate with them, what messages connect with them, and start to rethink the way that your brand can leverage that insight. Can you rethink the format? Can you rethink the title? Can you rethink the way that this audience would resonate with your story? What can you do? Once you've done that, once you've identified, okay, the users are on this channel. We know what types of stories they're resonating. This is when you have user content fit you now have to go into a place where you start to scale that content effort and you start to remix it across different formats. You start to take inspiration from the channels, you take inspiration from the content that was successful in those channels, and you start to remix that into content that will work on different platforms and different formats. That's when you start to do the remix. Now some of you might be thinking, did he just say copy what other people are doing and just repurpose it a little bit with your logo? No, that's not what I'm saying. I've had that done to me. I have another company called Hustle and Grind. We had this poster that went massive viral, made the front page of Reddit multiple times. People started taking our logo and replacing it with theirs. That is not a remix. Or when I was on SlideShare and I uploaded this presentation about Instagram marketing, had over 400,000 views. This other agency took it, they put their logo on it. This is not a remix. Nope, 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 nope. That's not a remix, guys. A remix is when you take something, let's say, um, an entire different industry is created, and you take inspiration from it. I really do believe the marketing industry can have some very similar parallels to the music industry, right? So the remix originates in the concept of hip hop, where you take inspiration from past artists, from past musicians, you combine that with your own style, your own spin, and you deliver something to your audience, to your people in a way that you know that they will resonate with. That's the remix. You take that same approach to your own content efforts and you will find success. Research, rethink, remix. The process looks like this, right? In the first two steps of research and rethink, you are experimenting. You are trying to uncover channel user fit and content user fit. The goal of research is to uncover channel, channel user fit. The goal of rethink is to find content user fit. And the goal of the remix is to find content market fit so you can start to scale your content and create a content marketing engine that is actually going to drive results. The first two is all about experimentation. It's about tinkering, it's about uncovering insight. And then when you get into that remix stage, you start to take those assets that you've developed and you start to scale them out across the entire um, plethora of the channels in which your audience is spending time. But across each of these, you have to understand some key things. You have to know what questions to ask. You have to understand how much time it takes to actually execute. You have to understand the metrics that result to success. And you have to have a clear understanding of what you do next. When it comes to research, let's think, think about this a little bit further. 
It starts by understanding the questions that you need to ask to validate whether or not a channel is right for you. Do we know that our audience is on Quora? Do we know that our audience is subscribing to different channels on YouTube? Are they on Reddit? Are they in Facebook? Are they using um, certain search terms? What's the volume? All of these things are questions that you have to ask in that research stage. You've researched the channels that your audience is spending time on, and once you've validated user channel fit, you move into that rethink section. That's when you start to ask yourself questions about the angle of your story. What hook should we be connecting with people on? What is the essence of the message that we need to share? You have to ask what topics are they going to resonate with? What questions on Quora have the most followers, right? What posts on Reddit are generating the most engagement? What articles are ranking the highest in Google? Is there any trends that I could uncover here? And then how can I rethink this in my own industry with my own story to drive results? Once you've done that, once you've started to track upvotes, once you've started to track shares, once you've started to track links, you start to rethink the successful content and remix it into content that aligns with your own efforts. This is when you have content market fit. You start to ask, how can I leverage this channel in a different way? How can I tell this story in a unique way? How can I try to remix this story for different formats, different audiences, and different communities? And how can I bring this to scale? Research, rethink, remix. Across all of this, though, you need to be measuring. You, during the research stage, you have to measure activity metrics. During the rethink phase, you have to measure engagement. And during the remix, you have to measure actual metrics that line up with your business goals. Research, rethink, remix. It's a model that will help you better understand the actual content that you should be developing. And what I like about this model is that it's not just limited to keyword research. More times than not, we fall into that trap of just relying on doing a quick keyword research search and relying on that info to guide what type of content we create. I do believe that keyword research is valuable. Let's say you run a food blog, you do some research, and you uncover that 30 days of quick and easy Mediterranean diet recipes is an article that you need to create because you can actually rank number one for this, and the search volume is going through the roof. By all means, chase that. Go after it. But what I'm challenging you to do is go a little bit deeper to embrace that model of research, rethink, and remix, and start asking yourself, is my audience also on Pinterest, and can I turn this into an infographic that they are going to love? Is this an asset that I should be going into a community on Reddit where people who are interested in this type of food are subscribed, and can I submit it there? Can I reformat it in a way that they will resonate with? Research, rethink, remix. There's a lot more that you can do when it comes to coming up with your content ideas, and my hope is in this presentation to leave you not only with that framework, but with some clear examples of ways that you can use it to drive results. One of my favorite places to spend time is in communities. I love spending time in online communities, not only to come up with ideas, but also to distribute content. That's something that we do frequently. We are spending time in communities all the time, when you're on Facebook and you're joining these groups, those are communities. There's so much value to be found in these communities for us to create great content, and I really think that it's something that is overlooked. Let's say you're targeting tech entrepreneurs. Let's say you're targeting CTOs, you're targeting engineers, you're targeting developers. There's tons of communities that these people spend time on. So if you were to go after this audience, you might find a site like Hacker News, and you would sort the content by the top posts. When you sort the content by the top posts, the only content that you are going to see is the content that actually has content user fit because it has risen to the top. It's the content that people are engaging with, that people are commenting on, that people are talking about. This is research and rethink gold. Let's say you're trying to connect with data-driven marketers or growth marketers or, I know, growth hackers, right? Like, let's say you're trying to target that group of people. You would go to a site like growthhackers.com, don't hate me for their domain, but you go into growthhackers.com, you can sort again their content by the top posts, and you start to reverse engineer what the best articles were. You start to look for trends, you start to look for what is it that people were constantly upvoting, what was it that made these different assets resonate with our audience. This is research and rethink goals. And you can do this for even your competitors. Let's say you're trying to um, target somebody who's running an entire site, a section of their site that is a forum that provides customer support. Guess what happens in that customer support forum? People are asking questions. People are getting answers. So again, you can go into these uh, customer support forums and start to re reverse engineer the content that rose to the top to gain insight for what will work for you. 
Another great example of this, let's say you're trying to target people in this room. You're trying to target SEOs. There's a great community out there, the Moz community that has been around for a long time, right? They have this Q&A form. You can go into this if you were targeting SEOs and you can sort the content by the content that generated the most responses. This forum has been around for years. So if you can sort the content in this community by the most um, responses, the most engagement, the most traction, you can quickly see and understand what type of content assets people want. So this is the most uh, response, this post had the most responses of all time in the Moz Q&A forum. And the question was, what's your hidden SEO secret? Back in 2011. So as you research and rethink and remix this content, it starts to give you ideas that maybe we should reach out to 20 of the top SEOs and ask them what their best SEO secret is and then release that as a blog post. Or maybe we should do a roundup of all of these different answers and create a series of YouTube videos where we're just interviewing these people. Or maybe we should run a conference and at the end of day one, we ask all of the speakers to share their biggest secret. Right? Like those are the things that you can do with that research, rethink, and remix model. I took this exact same question and then I remixed it a bit and I posted it up on Reddit just a few weeks ago to see what would happen. Got 65 comments, 32 upvotes, and a small community called Big SEO on Reddit. Again, this method works. You just have to understand the importance of going back to those fundamentals of research, rethink, and then remix. Another site uh, that offers a lot of value when you're trying to uncover content ideas worth chasing is Quora. If you're not familiar with Quora, it's kind of like Yahoo Answers. That'll take you back a little bit. Uh, it's like Yahoo Answers, but with a better design. Um, and they are essentially a question and answer site. And on this site, what happens is people go in and they ask a question. And then people from around the world come in and they answer those questions. Quora has been around for a while. They've been able to increase their authority across um, Google. And you will quickly see that a lot of their content is ranking extremely well. What you have the opportunity to do is reverse engineer the questions that have been asked, the answers that have been um, shared in this community, and use that to guide your content as well. Quora recently launched their ads platform. On their ads platform, you can actually type in a question. You can type in something that is relevant to your industry, and Quora will actually tell you how many views these questions are generating per month. This is the research piece, right? You start to research and understand what are the questions that are generating the most engagement on Quora. Then you go and answer those questions. You go and create a blog post answering these questions. You go into the questions, and you answer them. All of this is feasible where you can see that this question about a dirty business tactic is generating more than, than 40,000 views each week. That's an opportunity. One of the first times I leveraged this entire philosophy, this entire model, was on a site called Reddit. And I love Reddit. It's one of my favorite sites, and I spend a lot of time on there. Um, but I will warn you, Reddit will ban you real quick. I've been banned a couple times. Um, <laughs> but you can gain some amazing insight with Reddit. So let's say you're trying to uh, connect with entrepreneurs. Reddit has these things called subreddits. And a subreddit is essentially a small forum where a certain group of people are going to get content that, is interested, that they are specifically interested in. You go into that forum and you can sort the content again by top posts. What that offers you is insight into the things that this group wants. With Hustle and Grime, one of our audiences were entrepreneurs. We wanted to connect with these people, so we go into the subreddit, our entrepreneur, sort the content by the top posts, and we start to uncover trends. We start to see that entrepreneurs in this community want transparency, they want graphics, they want to see your Stripe account, they want you to come with a lot of value and tactics and insights on things that they didn't know. So I reverse engineered what resonated with people in this community, and then I gave it back to them. I created posts and content that I knew they would resonate with, and I leveraged the fact that I knew that they wanted transparency, they wanted graphics. Through this approach, I've been able to land on the front page of Reddit more than 10 times. I've been able to generate thousands of visits, I've been able to generate clients from Reddit, it's crazy, I know, but this is the possibility when you embrace that model of research, rethink, and remix. Let's say you go into Reddit and you're looking at the entrepreneurs. You can quickly start to see some trends. So here I can see that in the subreddit about entrepreneurs, they are constantly uh, upvoting and engaging with content that actually shares how much um, money people are generating per night or how much they made by selling a meme, how much they were able to make in a certain weekend. They want to see dollar signs. So if I want to resonate with this community, I have to rethink this a bit. I need to recognize that if I want my product to be successful in this community, maybe I need to write a post called five ways that my client was able to generate X number of uh, dollars in revenue by doing ABC. 
and this community will engage with it because I've researched them, I know they're there, I've rethought the way that they would engage with the content, and then I remix it for them. Or let's say you're going after people in the futurology space. So across all of these, these posts have more than 40,000 views. Futurology is this community where people talk about the future. They talk about electric cars, autonomous vehicles. They talk about plant-based food. They talk about all the things from the future, right? And they talk about um, Elon Musk more than anything. So if I'm trying to connect with this audience, I have to ask myself, okay, I've done the research, I know they're here, I know they're engaged, they're engaging with all this content, and Elon is clearly something that they're interested in. That's the research. Now I have to rethink this. So maybe I open up a keyword tool, I start doing some digging, I find out, okay, Elon Musk quotes, that's something people are looking for. Elon Musk books, Elon Musk resumes, Elon Musk memes, all of this stuff is things that people want. So how can I start to rethink and remix this content into something that I know that this audience will want? I can start creating this content, right? I can take inspiration from this. I can, if I'm in Canada or in California, I can have a nice little puff puff, and I can start to remix some amazing content that I know these people are gonna want, right? Like, that's the possibility. Um, I used this with, once I found this insight, I said, okay, Hustle and Grind, we need to create a graphic that leverages the fact that people on Reddit love Elon, and let's put that out there. So we put Elon in an Iron Man suit, put up a quote, and we made it to the front page. Somebody stole it, they reposted it, front page again, right? It's a simple model that consistently works. Research, rethink, and remix. Reddit also has an API available. What you can do is you can connect to their API and you can get tons of data on all of these different subreddits. For a research piece that we did at Foundation, we wanted to understand what the top 150 subreddits had in common. It turns out that there was a lot of things different, um, but there were some interesting insights that we were able to pull. One of the things that we found super valuable and that I think you can leverage with their API is you can start to actually gather some trigrams around what are the phrases and the words that people in different subreddits are using on a regular basis. So we looked at subreddits like bodybuilding and we started to notice that in a lot of the posts on bodybuilding, people were looking for cheap and healthy. They were looking for favorite meatless meals. So if we were to create content in this space, we would leverage these trigrams, we would leverage this data, we would leverage this insight to remix content that we know they would want. We then combine that with keyword research and maybe create blog posts about it, we create infographics about it, whatever that may be. In the same study, we found out that Redditors love links. This is great for us. If you're creating links, if you're creating content and there's a link to your content, this is amazing, right? Across the vast majority of the different subreddits, they love links. So if you have links on your website, this is a great opportunity for you not only to distribute your content, but also for you to research links that may have been shared there. There's a simple tip that you can do when you go to Reddit. If you type in site, colon, and then the website URL for any site, it will show you how much engagement that website has gotten on Reddit. So let's say you're interested in uh, Investopedia or WebMD. You type in site, colon, WebMD, and you quickly will get met with the content that has been published on WebMD that has generated the most engagement of all time you then can reverse engineer what content was successful here. So I notice that there's a piece where the second one, uh, the third one here says, there's very little proof that vitamin C actually has any effect on preventing the treatment of the common cold. Ooh, that's wild. I just took vitamin C. So if you see that, you're like, okay, how can I rethink this? Maybe I'm going to actually do a survey of all professionals in the healthcare space and ask them what they think about vitamin C they'll probably all tell you that they think vitamin C is good for the common cold. That's an interesting article idea. You then can take that to the media. You can then take that to the press. You then have an interesting story that is likely going to drive you meaningful results. You can create content by reverse engineering the success that has happened years ago and then applying it to your own space. Let's say you're going after the finance world. You can plug in Investopedia, and you can see that twice there was an article published where be about uh, banks having therapists known as wealth psychologists who help, who help ultra-rich clients who are unable to deal with all of their money figure out their life. That's interesting. It got submitted into Reddit twice, and it got more than um, 10,000 upvotes multiple times. That's an interesting insight. So how can you remix that a bit? Maybe you're going to reach out to all of these wealth psychologists and ask them for five tips, and then you create an article about um, the wealth psychologist providing insight into how you can be better with your money. All of those tips and all of those insights can come out of reverse engineering content like this. 
research, rethink, remix. That's a lot. I'm just getting started. Um, have you heard of Product Hunt? So if you have not heard of Product Hunt, it's a great site where essentially people upload products and services and solutions that they think are cool. Uh, and then the community comes in and they comment on them, they talk about them, and similar to like a Reddit or any other upvoting network, you're able to give these products upvotes. Um, this is a very unorthodox way of uncovering content ideas. Essentially, this is a place where people take cool things and they upload them for the world to see. There's actually been some pretty cool products that launched on this site. Meerkat um, launched there, Periscope, uh, Inbox by Google had a big launch initiative a few years ago on uh, Product Hunt, Ship Your Enemies Glitter. Did anybody hear of this? Ship Your Enemies, you do exactly what it says. Um, but most of us don't have our enemies like address, so you can do it to your fantasy football colleagues. That's what I did, it's fun. <laughs> um, but like, you can ship your enemies glitter. But some of these products, right, once they launch, once they start, they don't necessarily always stay alive, right? Like Meerkat was my jam for a while, um, but it died. And there is a lot of products on Product Hunt that got tons of traction, tons of love, early days, but they died. They died. And while it sucks for the makers, and while it sucks for the people who created these products, this is where you have an opportunity. I believe that this right here is your moment, this is your opportunity, this is your shot to seize everything you ever wanted, this is your moment. <laughs> But seriously, <laughs> this is a cool opportunity. These are products that already generated tons of love that people clearly demonstrated that they like. So what can you do with it? You go in and you start to realize some of these ideas were just content. So this one site, it's no longer alive, it's called First Users. They were a landing page that broke down how a handful of different products got their first users. That's it. There's another product called Front End List. It got Thousands of posts. It was the number two most popular product of the week um, back in 2015. It's called Front Endless. All it was was a bunch of links going to resources about being a front end developer. This is research and rethink gold. You can take these pieces that are no longer alive, rethink them for your own industry, for your own audience, recreate them, and bring to life something special. There's actually a product called Product Graveyard where all of these sites go when they die. Unfortunately, like this thing is no longer alive, but they got tons of engagement when they were, right? Like they were getting picked up by Engadget, they were getting picked up by all kinds of people. So if you can create something like that, it might work. Today, if you go to their site, you'll see this. That sucks. But there was another site that found out that this site had a lot of traction, and they created Product Haunt. And now Product Haunt is doing the exact same thing, and they're getting tons of traction with the same idea. Research, rethink, and remix. That's the philosophy that you can use. You can also do the same thing in Facebook groups. I love Facebook groups. I hate Facebook groups, but I love Facebook groups. I love Facebook groups as a marketer, but I hate Facebook groups because they're making people not vaccinate their kids. But that's a different story. <laughs> vaccinate your kids, folks. Um, Facebook groups are an amazing opportunity. An amazing opportunity exists in Facebook groups because billions, yes, billions of people are using them on a regular basis. Let's say you're trying to connect with coffee roasters. You go into a coffee roaster group and you start to realize that people are asking questions like, should I put tasting notes on my package? This has 29 comments. We're looking for a good quote for our wall. What's your favorite coffee quote? This has 78 comments. That's an interesting insight. Research, rethink, and remix. Can I write blog posts about both of these topics and publish that to my community? Of course. You then take that same thinking and apply it to any of the other groups that are relevant to your audience, right? And you start to research and rethink the content that is generating traction in those communities, and you recreate it for your world, for your space. There are Facebook groups about SaaS marketing, about Vince Carter, about sports, about hockey, about um, cleaning businesses, about Facebook Messenger. Anything you can think of, there's probably a Facebook group for it. Now, you might think this is very manual. I would agree. This can feel very manual, which is why I want to share with you a tool that is 100% should have been what I mentioned yesterday, so do not tweet this, um, and don't say I gave it to you. But there's this tool called Beano Post Scraper, completely against Facebook guidelines, completely illegal probably. Um, but what it allows you to do is connect your Facebook account to a various Facebook group. 
You can go into these groups and you can set, I want you to find and scrape the content that is generated more than 100 shares, more than 2,000 shares, more than 100 likes, and it will deliver back to you a very nice spreadsheet with all of the URLs for those top posts, as well as how many likes they got, how much engagement they got, and you can then use that to ensure that the content that you're creating at scale is actually going to drive results. You have to use a PC to use this tool, um, but it is very cool, it is very effective, and and it can drive back to you some amazing insights if you embrace that model of research, rethink, and remix. But some of this you can also just do with your eyes, right? Like you don't always need to go into the technology to embrace this stuff. You can go to Google and you can type in best CRM and you can start to research and rethink and remix the content that you see there. If you type in best CRM and you notice that three of the pieces that are showing up are lists, maybe you start to go deeper into the entire world of lists and reviews and start to understand why are they ranking? What are the best pages in the world that are lists? Okay, so you go to a site like Wirecutter and you quickly start to realize that they're investing tons of money in getting the actual products on hand trying the mode, creating video, creating photos, testing them to the nth degree, and then creating valuable assets because of it. This is the list and review strategy. It's been known to work consistently across tons of different industries. You then go into a site like Zapier and you see, the, oh, they're doing the same thing, except they're doing it in the software space. So they're doing the best to-do list apps, they're doing the best time tracking apps, the best URL shorteners, and these keywords are generating tons and tons of engagement and value for them. So let's say again, you're a coffee roaster, what can you do? You start to do the same thing. You start to create a list called the best Keurig machine, the best coffee press, the best coffee grinder. You buy all of these products, you get them shipped, you start to review them, you create videos for them, you publish that content, you now have an, a collection of assets where you're reviewing content that is relevant to your audience. Research, rethink, remix. Let's say you're in an, uh, an industry that is relatively new. Let's say you're in Bitcoin or eSports, something like that. You're going into a space where people are still trying to find out about phrases that are relevant. You might want to leverage a, a strategy that Investopedia made popular a few years ago when they started to roll out this keyword glossary strategy, where they essentially took a bunch of phrases that they, know, they knew people were looking for and they created definitions and landing pages around them, right? This is where you can uncover more content ideas by simply looking around at other industries. This is where that remix comes in. You take inspiration from other genres and you apply it to your own space. You take inspiration from other industries and you apply it to your own space. Moz did this extremely well. They have tons of different definitions for a handful of different keywords for somebody who's coming into the SEO industry to learn about domains. What are domains? They have that definition right there, right? And this is valuable content. Research, rethink, and remix it for your own space. Salesforce, multi-billion dollar company, is doing the exact same thing, where they are taking phrases like, what is CRM, and they are ranking for it because they were one of the first to create a landing page that defined that phrase. So how can you apply that thinking to your own space? When you dive deeper into it, you start to see that Salesforce's most valuable pages are coming from their definitions. So is this an opportunity for you to embrace the same thinking, the same approach? research, rethink, and remix. Now, I have to give a shout out to Mary Meeker, or shout out, you guys can kind of hear my Canadian coming out there. Shout out, shout out. That's always when I get, showed, I get called out or out on my, uh, on my outs. So, uh, Mary Meeker Report is without question one of my favorite resources that are published every year. Shout out to Mary Meeker. She puts out a free gem to all technologists, anybody in the business world, every single year, and it is gold. Um, this last year, when I was reading through the Mary Meeker report, I came across this piece about the Shopify storefront exchange, and it blew my mind, because this is content gold. Um, why? Because these sites have already successfully been able to generate revenue, they are now selling on Shopify, and you have the ability to go in and research and rethink and remix clear indicators around what made them successful. They will show you directly in the storefront exchange what assets they have on their site that are generating leads. They will show you directly on their site what assets are generating traffic. You can reverse engineer, research, rethink, and remix insights based off of the storefront, and they're very transparent around exact dollar amounts that they are generating. So I dove into this concept a little bit further and I uncovered Flippa and Empire Flippers, two other sites 
that are dedicated to selling sites. And what you can do is you can actually learn a lot by just listening to the podcast that sites like Empire Flippers do with the people who are selling their sites. They will tell you specifically, one guy was running a gaming site, and he said that uh, he hires VAs to write 700 word blog posts, he pays $50 to YouTubers who game, and he gets those videos embedded into a blog post, the VA uploads them, the VA writes a 700 word blog post about that video, he publishes it, and he spends about two hours a month on it, and he makes two grand a month just doing that, but just coordinating that relationship. This is research and rethink gold. Because if you can then think about your own industry, think about influencers who are using YouTube, who might not have a lot of money coming in, and you can offer them $500, $50, whatever it is, and you can invest in a 700-word blog post to kind of amplify that, and you can generate traction, that's a real opportunity. Research, rethink, and remix. You can actually pay a small fee to even understand exactly what companies um, on Empire Flippers are doing. Again, research, rethink, and remix. That's the philosophy. That's the approach that you can use that doesn't solely rely on keyword research, but can allow you to uncover user channel fit, content user fit, and eventually that content marketing fit. And I believe wholeheartedly that if you embrace this model and you are constantly measuring your metrics, you will uncover some content gold. There's tons of different ways that you can go about it. Right? Like these are all of the different things that we just talked about. I know that it's a lot. It might feel like you just drank out of a fire hydrant. I know, I apologize. There's a lot there. But there are tons of things that you can do to go even deeper beyond keyword research to uncover ideas that are worth chasing. But when you have all of these ideas, when you have all of this list, you might be thinking, okay, Ross, this is all great and dandy, but how do I know exactly which ideas should I chase? Welcome to the Maslow hierarchy of content needs. It starts with understanding ROI, right? Like, does this content piece that we are about to create actually drive home ROI? Like, is there gonna be a return on our investment? If it's yes, okay, move to the next one. Is it within our team's circle of competence? Can our team actually do this at a high level and create something worth creating? If the answer is yes, go to the next one. What's the cost to create it? What's the time to create it? And I believe you should be giving weights to each of these things um, across the board. And then if yes, you have the cost, you have the budget, you, can, you have the time, the next thing is to ask yourself, how shareable is it, how linkable is it, how rankable is it, and what's our competition like? And again, you want to have weights across all of these and you can actually do some math around whether or not a content asset is worth creating. But I always believe that even when you go through this and you are still met with a list of tons of different ideas. You have to do the things that offer you the path of least resistance, but optimize for the opportunity to succeed, right? That's what you have to do. You do the things that have the path of least resistance, but have the best chance of succeeding. And if even through all of that, you still feel like it's overwhelming, right? Like if you still feel like you have too many ideas, even after you've crossed ideas off of your list, even you've identified, okay, that idea is trash, even if you've simply identified that this piece of content is going to be too much work, if you are still met with a list that is overwhelming, that is like filled with great ideas, congratulations. You just met the modern day version of that Scholastic Book Fair. Thank you guys for listening, really appreciate it. We've got time for probably one question. Uh, if anybody wants to stick up a hand. So I know this is going to be kind of a loaded question, but boring industries, right? You showed a lot of Reddits that had a lot of people on them. How do you come up with ideas for boring industries where there's a subreddit with 2,000 subscribers? Yeah, so great question. Um, I think boring industries is where you have even more opportunity because everybody thinks it's boring, so they don't create great content. So you have the opportunity to, again, take inspiration 
from industries that might be hot. Like you can go on Wirecutter and see some insights around, this is the type of stuff that works here. How can we apply it to our own industry? Then you go through the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and you say, okay, if we have to leave a review for a big manufacturing product because that's the boring industry, that's gonna be expensive. Then you have to say, okay, what else can we do? Um, but I think boring industries has the same opportunity. You just have to think differently and focus on that process around let's research, let's rethink, and then remix the content based off of our own audience once we understand what type of things they want. Um, I think we underestimate how sexy a boring industry can be become uh, by simply applying some unique thinking. I always say there's no such thing as a boring industry. There's just a lot of boring marketers. Um, no offense, no shade being thrown. <laughs> It's <laughs> amazing. Uh, Ross, I was going to ask a real quick question. Um, so when you're uh, doing this research on like a Reddit community, yeah. uh, there's a lot of anonymity behind right. usernames on Reddit, maybe less so on a Facebook group. Sure. To what degree do you, uh, do you end up engaging with that community before you drop some shithole content in there first? Yeah. Do, you, uh, do, you, do you spend time there before you get them to know you before you drop it? Yeah, so when it comes to Reddit, you definitely want to build some rapport with the community beforehand. Um, two insights. One, I would always recommend that you try to see the community with content that isn't directly related to you first, and then you jump in with your own content. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say you recognize that it's always a good thing to try to be humble. Uh, so when you come into a Reddit community, it's always great to come in and say, hey folks, I've been a lurker for a long time. Thank you so much for all the value that you've given me over my life. You guys are amazing, and they just love that. Um, <laughs> stroke the ego. Um, there's nothing better. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Give it up for Ross Simmons, everyone. Thank you.